scan were expressed. But in this case, it's even longer, right? Because it was it was 5.8 months, which is a very long time in terms of rat years. And yet yes, there were yes, there were yes. no ill effects, right? The rats seem to be not, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. So we haven't seen and including she also any kind of adverse effect. So they are absolutely benign when delivered by by a viral vector. And they are quite toxic when they are expressed in transgenic mice. We don't know why. We don't know why. Perhaps because in transgenic mice they are present when they are embryos. And perhaps they have they leave some kind of imprint printing mm. that uh, affects the animal later and sensitizes the animal to the gene. We don't know. And it's uh, very difficult to know this mechanism because everything is very complex in vivo, very, very complex. But we, mm. we know the result. We really seems, I mean, clear to everybody now, to, to most researchers, that the transgenic mice do not work. The, the first experiment done with transgenic mice was, was quite promising was uh, done in 2016 by uh, Juan Carlos Ispizua Belmonte. But he used transgenic mice were, were, that were progeric. I mean, they were mice transgenic for other genes too, that uh, a, a mouse lives in three years. These mice aged and died in four months. So they have a very precocious um, aging process. It's like a suffering from progeria, they live much shorter than normal people. So these are pathological models. The Yamanaka genes there worked very well. It did not rejuvenate the animals, but prolonged their life span twice. But twice was in, instead of three months, six months, which is very short from mm -hmm. three years. So our, the lesson was, the take-home message was that uh, pathological models have been used with I prefer to use always rats without any treatment, natural rats. Just the, I, I know that in my rats there is nothing, not, nothing strange, nothing pathological. They are just rats taken from the our animal quarters without any kind of treatment. So uh, this is I really, really uh, have confidence in this kind of rats. I am a, bit, a little bit suspectful of uh, pathological models even if they work, because they are pathological. When these uh, same experiments were tried in normal mouse, mice, I mean animals that live three years, the treatment that worked very well in Pisuo Belmonte's hands did not work, literally did not work, or worked marginally in normal mice. So the lesson was, well, do not trust too much pathological models. Try to use normal animals. So they were transgenic mice, but they had the tet on, tet off. And if it was expressed temporarily, then that seemed to work. Or at least... Yes, it, exactly. Yeah. Well, this is what people is forced to do. They cannot express the genes continuously because they will get tumors. So what mm -hmm. they do is to do uh, interrupted uh, reprogramming. Mm -hmm. So they express the genes, the Yamanaka genes, three days. Mm -hmm. Then they silence them with doxycycline or removing doxycycline because the system is regulatable as our vector. And then they let the animals rest for five, five days. Then again, they activate the genes, the Yamanaka gene for three days. And it seems that uh, uh, when reprogramming begins, the first uh, epigenetic marks that go, that are removed, are the age marks. But the identity marks remain for a longer time. So if you apply this trick, of expressing the genes for three days, letting the reprogramming process begin, remove some of the age marks, but uh, spare the identity mark, then silence the genes, the, the identity mark has, are not really affected, are not removed, and impact the animals survive well without, so this works because the animals survive well without any tumors and you can, uh, have uh, this kind of uh, study or experiment for months without having any problem. It has been done. The problem is that after four months of treatment this way with this uh, uh, cyclic partial reprogramming, this is the technical name, they are, and then they compare control animals with the animals treated this way, 
and there was no rejuvenation. They tried, they, they checked the hippocampus, the memory. So they have, they had, they got a marginal improvement, quite marginal, really looks more like a negative result, like a positive result. So, okay, they published that, they were a marginal uh, improvement, but nothing really to be compared to what happened in cells, for example, nothing at all. So the, the 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 benign effects, the positive effects, were too weak to encourage people to continue working with uh, transgenic um, animals, especially if you look for uh, physiological changes, functional changes. If you are looking for changes in certain molecules, it's okay. But really, if you don't get functional results, functional improvement, I don't mean rejuvenation. But increasing memory or strength, something that you can really uh, tangible that is, you can say, well, okay, this animal looks better, is more vital. If you don't get anything of this with your treatment, you are not really very encouraged to continue working with this model. So the Sinclair's model is much promising, although we will never be able to rejuvenate an animal with this model because this gene therapy can be applied to one region, to another region but cannot be applied to the whole animal. So mm -hmm. this will not probably be the way to achieve rejuvenation of a whole organism, which is the holy grail that yeah. we pursue. We, so this is still relatively far in the future, but at least we are going steps forward to have some results that allow partial solutions to us. For example, if you can solve the problem of memory, um, that would be really a nice. The mm -hmm. problem is, Richard, that these methods are quite invasive. I mean, people will not be happy if they have to receive an stereotactic injection every month. What is the, so far, the best way to improve, uh, to prolong life is uh, young plasma, young plasma or derivatives from young blood. These methods are, I, we have done this kind of studies, I have discussed this with you. Mm -hmm. These methods are really not invasive because it's only intravenous injections of plasma, which are not devoid of any adverse effect. And they really have been shown by many uh, researchers that they prolong life. They prolong life. They did not rejuvenate. They prolong life. So there is an epigenetic clock that ticks. And they, what they, they do is just to slow down the ticking rate of the epigenetic clock. But they don't have force the clock to go backwards. The only thing where we see the clock going backwards is in cells exposed to the Yamanaka gene. This is why the, those, the rejuvenation of the cells, what I, I described in the first part, is so marvelous, such a, a marvelous achievement, because it was the only instance so far where we achieved true rejuvenation, because these cells are completely rejuvenated. Those uh, skin fibers have a long telomeres, they have um, functional mit mitochondria, they have everything young. You, you look at this at least with the parameters that, that have been looked at, they really seem to be really young. Again, we cannot have this kind of thing with, with in vivo so far, so far. So we are, you know, you, we are tenacious uh, species, we keep, we will keep working, and this is from the dawn of civilization. the uh, The dream of uh, indefinite youth has been, and the rejuvenation has been with us, and we continue. It's in uh, in our nature, so we will continue working on this. So yeah. So as a last kind of question, what what? Um, so you did these two experiments. What what what's your next plan? What in terms of experimenting? Well. My next plan is uh, um, to repeat the hypothalamus experiment because, you know, uh, in the in the previous experiment, the hippocampus experiment, we measure methylation, the effects of methylation. We couldn't measure the effects of methylation, or DNA methylation in the hypo hypothalamus because since the rats, when we had the rats, some of the rats were pregnant, some other rats were not pregnant the, because it was part of the experiment. So there was an heterogeneity in the animal because the hypothalamus of a rat that is pregnant is quite different uh, epigenetically from the hypothalamus of uh, the rat of the rat that is not pregnant. So 
What we have to do is to do a, another experiment injecting the genes, but without mating the, the rats. And studying one month after injection, maybe one month and a half, what happens with the methylation of a hypo, hypothalamic DNA? This could be the next plan. I really am hopeful that other researchers got interested in this because I myself in Argentina is limited what I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea will be really to, ma to magnify this uh, effort by getting the interest of other researchers right, with more, more resources than me, certainly, trying to do the same thing, probably they will do it in mice, because in the northern hemisphere, having having uh, rats is very expensive, because the rat is 10 times larger than the mouse. And rat is, for many experiments, brain experiments, is better than mice. This is really my experience. I have been working with rats for many years, and I have this, uh, this is my learning. I have worked with mice, but mice uh, are less less smart, less smart than, than rats. So for cognitive experiment, I prefer really rats. Right. Okay, that's really interesting. So uh, yeah. yeah, anything else? Uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, we, you've been very generous with your time and uh, thank you okay. very much for talking uh, through those well, experiments. Let me mention you two things. Mm -hmm. These are my plans. What are my my hurdles? Two, okay. my students, the ones that are very very trained in this in this uh, studies, are getting uh, um, uh, have received had got their PhD degree. So when they this is the the objective of they, them coming to my lab, then they move probably. Uh, overseas to to mm -hmm. continue their career, I lose them, and this is a uh, five years of training that I have to start again with a new person, and this is at going through this period of uh, three of my students have left their train because it's just uh, they are going uh, abroad, and I have to recruit new people. This is one of the problems, and the other problem that everybody has, and we had a lot of these problems in Argentina, is funding. Because the, the, you probably have read about the economic situation in Argentina, which is appalling. So funding, really, I live from the funding that received from internationally, because the funding that I could get to, from Argentina is very little at this point. Perhaps in the future will be better. And I am 72, so I have to <laughs> act uh, without much delay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Still, I still seem to be uh, in in good control of my uh, mental faculties. I mean, I think that I still uh, say mm -hmm. um, uh, things that are reasonable and doing productive research. But, you know, biology is biology, and maybe in six, five, seven years, I will begin to decline mentally. This is something that I know uh, for certain. So I, I will try to do as much as I can now and try to leave a sort of legacy to the future. This is why I really am very interested to get the interest of other researchers, younger researchers, that can just take this uh, legacy and go further. Yes, I certainly hope so. I, it's so interesting and rejuvenating, well, rejuvenating or improving the factors of the brain as we get older is just uh, so important. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, your work and for explaining that today. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you soon.